International money markets are more volatile than ever, and the best predictions suggest this chaos may last long term. But in the Bible, we see many times when God blessed his people in the face of famine and adversity. Craig Broker is with us to talk about wealth transfer in the kingdom of God. Stay with us. This is Lifeline Today. Welcome to Lifeline Today. Glad you've tuned into the broadcast. Mm -hmm. We are going to have a great program. Once again, our guest is Craig Broker. Welcome. Good to Welcome be with you again. Welcome to the program. You know, we Good didn't mention you. where you're from, but you're from, uh, you pastor Southside Victory Church in Calgary, in Calgary, Alberta. For 24 years. Wow. You know, that's amazing. Same church. It really is. Yeah. Because I remember the day that all started. Uh, Okay, let's move along now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> decades ago. Let's yeah. keep going. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, that, yeah, that's awesome. But we've had our Dominion Conference last summer on yep. uh, 2015 at your church. It was phenomenal, it was actually. Oh, it was wow. an amazing conference. I, I was in this euphoria for that period of time after <laughs> that. Were. It was great. And yeah. it uh, was just very powerful. So, but today uh, we're going to continue on with a subject we started in a previous program, which was about... Uh, well, first of all, light and darkness. The yeah. days that we're in today, Isaiah 60, great darkness, great light. And we need you to help us to, you, you know, know. Can I interject sorry? there? Because mm -hmm. I'm just thinking about that statement, mm -hmm. light and darkness. And, yeah. and I'd like to say something about that because people, we just assume people recognize that. But here's the reality. If you say something, if you were to have a parade today and it was to celebrate a marriage between a man and a woman, it would be shut down as intolerant, mm -hmm. as hate speech, as uh, insensitive and, and bigoted yeah. in view. Now think about this. <laughs> what happens when there's, you know, great gay pride days? It's, it's completely the opposite in nudity. It, I mean, none of us could ever get away with that even yeah. legally. Yeah. Yeah. Showing you the contrast of where we have come in what, five, 10 yeah. years? Yeah. That now right. it's even possible to just say, you know, let's help the families. Let's help men and women have better marriages. Oh, that's bigoted to say yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the contrast is getting clearer in pretty much every area. And, and I said it in our last program, we can't avoid it. No. It's not going to go back to stable and it's not going to go back to peaceful. Everything yeah. that I see, not only from Christian sources, but I'm hearing secular sources say the same. that are saying we are in a tremendous shift that, wow. that we don't know what to do with, with mm -hmm. our politics, with our social you know, structures, et cetera, et cetera. So, mm. you know, I guess maybe there's something that simplifies it for us. We, we know that there are two kingdoms that are battling, mm -hmm. right? There's two kingdoms. Yeah. The, the Bible says that we've all been in the game long enough to experience. Yeah. They're battling for influence in the nations. They're battling for control. Mm -hmm. They're battling, the, you know, everybody knows this, for the souls of men. Yes, that's all true. But I'll tell you something they're battling for, and this is what people don't realize. The kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of the enemy are battling for finances because finances gives you control. Oh mm. my. You know the old golden rule? Yes. Whoever has the gold rules, rules right? right? And and you can see this. You can see it developing in the world. You can see it all the way back where um, certain nations would use and control finances and, and control other nations by that and, you know, by sanctions and that, that's, those are tactics of warfare that's come all the way through. Mm -hmm. But it's very interesting that we've come to the day when, according to the Bible, both Daniel and Revelation talk about the Antichrist creating a structure by which he controls global finance and through that, through global finance, he controls people. He controls, let me see if I've got the scripture here. In Revelation 13, it says this, He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on the right hand of their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And then Daniel said this in Daniel 8, 23, In the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their fullness, a king shall arise, and theologians agree, it's speaking about the Antichrist in the mm -hmm. end days, having fierce features, and then it says a number of interesting things. Number one, he understands sinister schemes. Hmm. Hmm. And we'll apply that in a financial area. His power shall be mighty, not by his own power. He shall destroy fearfully. And then again, it says this, he shall prosper and thrive. The word prosper there literally means an abundance of wealth. It's a Hebrew word that hmm. means whatever he needs will come to him. Yeah. So there won't be any lack. Yeah. 
And then it says, he shall destroy the mighty, also the holy people, through his cunning. He shall cause deceit to prosper under his rule. He shall exalt himself in his heart. And then it says this, he shall destroy many in their prosperity. Hmm. And the word prosperity there, uh, the root word for that is economy or finance. or So you can see that the Antichrist, and, you know, let's just step back for a minute. People say, well, you know, are we in the days of the Antichrist? Or like you asked me in the first one, are we in the last days? Well... My wife and I had to ask ourselves a couple of hard questions. We said, do we believe that we're in the last days? 95% of the prophetic scriptures have been fulfilled in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, we are. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I like what one guy said. He said, well, if you're not in the last days, you're in your last days. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but as we see what's happening in the world, and for me, my wife and I have started to sort of study some of this global finance stuff over the last few years and come to find out that the systems for somebody or somebodies to be able to control the flow of finance all over the world are being set up as we speak. They're in place. They are absolutely being set up. Mm -hmm. You know, again, whether we'll live to see that day or not, I don't know. Okay. Everything inside of me, from my understanding, tells me that this stuff is accelerating and we're going to see some of this. Yes. So the kingdom of darkness is fighting for control of maintaining that money and keeping that money where, it wants, where, the, where darkness wants it to go. At the same time, the Bible talks about this wealth transfer, and you and I were reading there in the last program in Isaiah 60, yeah. where it goes through all these different things where it says, the wealth of kings will come to you, the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you, your sons and daughters shall return to you, bringing their silver and their gold with them. Mm. Mm. So we are living in the day where I absolutely believe, from my, my studies and, and in this year with the stuff that's happening in global banking, yeah. I believe that we are going to see some of these things begin to happen like never before. Mm. Sudden turnarounds, sudden shifts, sudden yeah. industry changes. You know, and the pattern now, is, you know, if we go back to uh, Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel, Daniel, it seems like, is in a very disadvantaged position rel relative to Nebuchadnezzar, and he even has a dream, says, you're the golden head, There's a gold, and you're the most glorious kingdom that's ever ruled on the earth, mm -hmm. you know. It was in, yet Daniel experienced supernatural miracles of intervention over and over again, right within that kingdom, because that kingdom is the very same kingdom that God says is the Antichrist kingdom yeah. at the end of the age. Yeah. Saw it as one image. Yeah. One, one kingdom is a continuation to the other, but it's one singular demonic entity. Yes. And so with that experience, it shows you that even though Daniel was a prisoner in some ways, yeah. uh, well, he was, mm -hmm. yet what profound influence totally. and impact and miracles. They couldn't throw him into a lion's den. They couldn't, you know, his friends into a furnace. Yep. Things that God, that God intervened on their behalf shows you, again, how God will use the weak things yes. of this world to yes. confound the wise. I believe that, that one of the ways we're going to see some of this wealth transfer happen is believers, in, in a sense, are going to infiltrate and get positions like Daniel, positions of great influence. Hmm. And I, I thought of something, because when we started looking at this, I thought, if I was the devil, I would set up a system that was exactly the same as God's but exactly in reverse, because the devil knows that God's systems work. Yeah. So as I started to break that down, I thought, okay, well, we look at the body of Christ. Well, we know that we have angels that work with us. Apparently, according to the scriptures, there's angels of different degrees. There's higher angels and lower angels. From some of the things that we've learned from people that have, you know, seen into the spirit, there's angels that have different tasks and assignments. Well, all of that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's not unscriptural. But you can see that it, it's logical enough to say, well, that makes sense, like an army. It's an army of God. You, in an army, you've got generals and, and mm -hmm. you know, lieutenants and privates and all that sort of thing. So if I was a devil, I would set up a system, and we know this, that he has principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and wicked spirits in high places. So the devil has rank and file in the spirit. Mm -hmm. But think about this. In the body of Christ we have different levels of kinds of giftings. Mm -hmm. You have apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers in descending order. And in each one of those categories, there are certain degrees or strengths of anointing. And authority. So there are, and authority. So there are people in the earth who are of the kingdom of God who exert influence in the earth. So I flipped that whole thing over. And it, I mean, I probably didn't think of it myself, but I thought, from what, I under, what I've learned, the devil has people in the earth of different levels and in different positions, the same as God does. He's got the spiritual and the natural. God has the spiritual and the natural. He has his body. Would it be safe to say that the devil has his body as well? 
Mm. He has people, and we know this because we've seen people come out of occult, out of witchcraft, out of New Age. Some of them are doing it and don't know that they're in darkness because it's just all one kingdom. But some of them know that they're fighting for a very specific kingdom. Mm -hmm. Talk to somebody who's been a 33rd level Freemason who's gotten saved out of that and what they know about the manipulation of spiritual things by natural people through the um, inauguration or the incorporation of sacrifices and certain well, spiritual mm -hmm. things. We're, we're seeing both kingdoms and those kingdoms are starting to fight for the thing that controls the world mm -hmm. and that's money. And that's There's money. A, a, a testimony of a Christian evangelist who was once one of the highest satanic leaders over the area of New Jersey, New York, mm -hmm. Eastern area, which again includes finance. But he, you know, need, needless to say, actually, if you go online and watch his videos, uh, phenomenal transformation, conversion, yeah. and he's a powerful evangelist today. But he says, he said, Christians in the most part are naive about what really goes on in that realm. And oh. he said that the strongest well, what do they call them, witches and warlocks, warlocks yeah. you know, in that whole region, would gather on New Year's and prior, prior to New Year's and talk about what is going to happen in the next year. Yes. And they would declare it. And they would, decre yes. would, they would do whatever Decree they do mm -hmm. to enforce it. And he said, and then it would. Yeah. We were the ones that, so he, he said there's a great arrogance in that realm too that they'd say, well, we set the agenda. And uh, there is some degree to that except even Nebuchadnezzar or any of those subsequent thought they set the agenda, but then God showed Nebuchadnezzar, no, you're not. I, I supersede that. You know what I really like? What, uh, and I never thought of this until going over some of these things again just in the last number of weeks, that the devil is setting up his system that will eventually result in the Antichrist having control. Mm -hmm. One thing that we know, uh, and I learned this almost 15 years ago, is that they are going, they're moving the currencies into baskets. They will move the currencies into baskets in the world. They're aiming towards 12 regional currencies. It's, and it's all, it's, it's just smart, right? Mm -hmm. You can't have one world currency unless you bring some congruency in, in some yeah. of these other things. And so mm -hmm. I thought, God is going to let the devil build the system and then he's going to go inside the system like a virus, like something that goes viral, and he's going to put his people in there to infect that system with righteousness. And we've seen this time and again through history. Remember when the devil had the whole system together and one thing brought him down, the very thing that he thought he was winning was, was crucifying Jesus. Yeah. So That's in true. asking the questions about, okay, well, how, how's this going to happen? What's a, I flew out to Vancouver some time ago for the day uh, there was a guy who was in involved in global finance, and I, I flew out and met with him. He used to work for the International Monetary Fund. Mm. Mm. Became saved, and he told me this. He said, we would go into countries, and we would tell them, yes, the United Nations and the IMF have agreed, International Monetary Fund, have agreed to give you $10 billion over the next two years. But here's the conditions. Yeah. You will allow euthanasia. You will legalize homosexuality. You will legalize abortion. He literally said all those things were in the contract. He said these people transfer, the elite of the world, they transfer trillions of dollars from hand to hand from one place to another around the world. And I'm sitting there in the Vancouver airport for three hours talking to this guy because he's a believer. And the Lord told me he needs prayer. So you have to, you have to get a prayer covering for him. Yeah. And he was one that was on the inside. And it was very interesting to discover somebody who'd been on the inside and come out and has an understanding of how their system mm -hmm. works. And of course, then we got talking about how the, the body of Christ would get into that and influence that. Mm. Mm. You know, and that's an interesting, because you hear these testimonies of people just like that in those high influential positions yep. becoming believers and then recognizing the strategies that are being done. That's like this other gentleman. And, and what makes them so passionate about their ministry is that they uh, know the plans of the enemy. Now, one of the things we want to just say right now is that the scripture is very clear. We never approach those plans with a sense of fear, apprehension, mm -hmm. because we know that the name of Christ is greater than any mm -hmm. power. And we also know this, that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Even when we're living in days like this where there's great light, great darkness, the whole point of it is to bring in the harvest, which is yes. the souls of mankind, into the kingdom of God and to bring great light to Jesus Christ who, 
If you read the book of Revelation, it's not actually the revelations. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's right. It's the eminence of his kingdom that is being established in heaven and earth. And that's what really is going on, the transition and transfer of authority and power and all the riches of the world and the riches of, of the generations belong to the king of kings. And so that's really our perspective. We need to keep that in mind because you can descend into this really quite dark and negative view yep. of what the enemy's doing, but that's not the full picture. We're going to come back in a moment. We're going to share some thoughts with you about how you can support this program. We really appreciate that, you know. It's a great part of our ministry and uh, wouldn't be here without you. And secondly, we're going to tell you about our prayer center. There's prayer partners standing by right now. Dick and Joan DeWert have a passion to see the spiritual climate of Canada changed, bringing hope and healing to the nation and beyond. We have made an impact, but we need you. Join our media army today. Your gift of $50 a month or $100 a month will help us reach thousands with the powerful message of the gospel and the prophetic word for Canada. In appreciation of your monthly partnership, we will send you the two-hour special live premiere of Dick and Joan's TV program Lifeline Today which contains their personal story of failure and redemption, as well as their vision for Canada. Thank you for your partnership. I want to read Isaiah 61.3 from the Voice Translation. It says, As for those who grieve, God has sent me to give them a beautiful crown in exchange for ashes, to anoint them with gladness instead of sorrow. And I love the way it says this in this translation, to wrap them in victory, joy, and praise instead of depression and sadness. Are you feeling like you're wrapped in depression and sadness today? Jesus wants to wrap you in his loving arms. He wants to wrap you in victory and peace and joy and praise. Please give us a call in the prayer center, 403-942-0123. We want to help you give all of your inner pain, all of your struggles to Jesus. Lay them at the foot of the cross. So give us a call or you can email us at prayercenter at Dick and Joan. Thank you, Jill. Yes, call the prayer center. Uh, yeah. There are just got some great people, and Jill in particular, <laughs> just amazing the follow up that goes on there, Jill. Yeah, it's wonderful. Um, and we're talking to Craig, you know, and we're talking about the whole position of kingdoms at the end of the age. Yep. Well, you know what, folks, this is really what's going on. Yes. Has been, you know, that's why uh, Daniel had the vision of that image, starting with Nebuchadnezzar. But basically, what that whole revelation is, is that there's been a principality, stronghold kingdom that has continued through the ages. But it's at the end of the age where it becomes mm -hmm. uh, in full, I guess, full expression. Yeah. But the scripture says, too, that they, it was a kingdom of iron and clay, partly strong, partly weak. Yeah. So it's not as strong <laughs> as well, it seems that way, but it's not as strong as it really appears. I think of, too, what Daniel saw. He saw a little rock yep. cut out and it, it broke that image into absolute yeah. dust. It was blown away, yeah. and that little rock became a kingdom that filled the whole earth. Mm. I mean, there's something you said right there that I want to touch on. The, the iron and the clay don't, don't bond. They don't bind. They can't chemically, they won't bind together. And the clay is fragile. You know, if you have a clay pot and you drop it, it breaks. Mm -hmm. This is something extremely interesting about the, the uh, economic structure of the world right now. It is extremely fragile. Yeah. We have known for some time that, you know, the U.S. is going to go through another crisis. I mean, you, you listen to secular investors and business people. They're saying that all over. The only reason it, it can't, because the other nations will hold it up. If they go through it, China, the, the amount of debt that they have with the U.S., the connection of those currencies, there's about seven nations that are all so interwoven that if one goes down, the other ones will all fall. Like so the dominant. fragility is there. And in the midst of this, God is going to start bringing, well, he's already started, bringing yeah. up his people, putting them in positions and positioning them for transfer of wealth. Mm. Yeah. The really great, great question is, so how do we get ready for that? That's exactly you know, right. Is it going to happen? And you were reading before in Isaiah 60. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of scriptures in there. I don't have it on my oh, iPad here. You know, it says the Lord will arise over you and his glory shall be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. What, what is the relationship then between the glory and the financial, yeah. uh, the financial thing that God is doing? 
I, I found out something years ago, uh, to someone else's credit, I heard them say it and I began to study it. He said, whenever the glory of God comes to the earth, it, because it's, it's the purity, it's the most pure thing there is, right? Yeah. It draws to itself the riches of the earth. Wow. In other words, when God, when God said, okay, here's the temple you're going to build for me, he didn't say, you know, okay, make this thing sort of nice and sort of humble. It was beaten gold on the inside and out. They say that when the yeah. sun came over the Mount of Olives, the, the, the brightness of the sun reflecting off the temple that God gave the designs for was blinding because the whole thing was covered with gold. Yeah. Yeah. So God always, I mean, look at heaven, the, the jewels that are at, at the foundation stones when you walk in. So that, Streets the glory is gold, bringing, the, it, it will bring the luminous. silver and gold. And we read that in the last, mm -hmm. in the last um, um, broadcast in Haggai that he said the temple will be filled with glory. The silver's mine, the gold is mine. Hmm. So I believe Christians have to prepare for this. The abundance of the sea is coming to us. The wealth of the Gentiles, these are all here in Isaiah. And I will beautify the place of my feet, he says, yeah. wow. which I think is really interesting. Well, preparing we're his footstool. A, preparing a platform for, for himself. The earth it? is his footstool. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So yeah. the Lord got on my case about this. <laughs> and because and, I, I said, God, how do we prepare yeah. For this, if, if I'm reading it right, a wealth transfer that none of us have ever seen before, yeah. Yeah. where God funds the body of Christ to do the job, to win the loss, to build the schools and the hospitals and the orphanages and things like yeah. that, that we've always built. The body of Christ, the church of God, has always been the one that built all those things. Yeah. We're the ones that started Harvard and Yale mm -hmm. and yeah. Cambridge and all these kinds and of great institutions hospitals. of learning, you know, and the hospitals. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, how do we prepare for this? And he brought me uh, Proverbs 13:22, which is uh, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I'm, I'm probably one of those guys that has that bumper sticker on the back of the RV that says, you know, we are spending our children's inheritance. <laughs> I mean, you look at these things and you think, okay. we don't think that way. No, we don't think. So the Lord started to challenge me, and I, I, I wrote this down. What does it take for me to leave an inheritance to my children's children? <clears throat> if I live to 75, that's about 20 years from now, my oldest son, that will be 2036, my oldest son will be 50, his son will be 24. Okay, his son's four right now. Mm -hmm. Upon my dev demise then at 75 approximately, Ben, Ian, and Jennifer, my children, and their spouses should receive an inheritance from me that empowers them to increase even more and leave an inheritance to their, their children. children yeah. Yeah, right. So I was looking at that and I was like, okay, well, let's go a little further. So 25 years from 2036 is 2061. Yeah. Lord willing, you know, that he doesn't come before that. At that point, Ben will be 75, and should he pass on, then Lex will be 49. So I started thinking... A house in Calgary, a 1,000 square foot home in Calgary, costs $500,000. Hmm. A, a 1,000 square foot home. It's a starter home. A it's one home. of those ones that's so skinny yeah. like this, you yeah. know. So I started running numbers. So a 2,000 square foot home in Calgary, depending on location, is a million dollars. I have three kids. I'm just going what the Bible says here. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children. His children. If I'm going to leave an inheritance, another scripture says that a man leaves a house and lands are the inheritance of fathers. I thought, the Jews have done that for ages. Buy 10 acres, 10 kilometers outside of the city, and sit on it for 10 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it yeah, works, it's a right? strategy. So if I'm going to buy my children a house that they can grow their family up in, even for the first 15 years, at a million dollars, this is in today's market, I have to have $3 million to leave my children a house. The reason it says lands in the scripture is because land is worth money. We would say to leave our children investments, to leave mm -hmm. our children commodities, to leave, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, annuities, whatever. To, and I thought, I have to think bigger. I've been thinking way too small. I've been thinking of just trying to make sure that I get my payments and all that, and this is what I challenged my church. I said, how big are you thinking? And they looked at me kind of like, well, we're getting paid next month. And I said, <laughs> most of us, that's where we live. We live from paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. So how do we challenge believers to start thinking? You know what the Rothschilds do? they think 500 years ahead. Yeah. Wow. They're the richest family in history. Their estimated worth is $100 trillion. The Rockefellers, who's the American version, have also have a plan for 500 years ahead. Their estimated worth is a, a mild 20 trillion. Hmm. And I thought, these are the people that have controlled global finance. You can go back and look at, it's all there mm -hmm. now in the Freedom of Information Act for three and 400 years since the banking empire started in, in Germany and then Britain. And they said they pass on their long-term goals to their children, so their children are always thinking at least three generations ahead. Hmm. And we don't do that. 
Hmm. Now, is the Lord going to come back? Yes, I believe he's going to come back, and he's probably going to come back before we get a chance to do the 500-year thing, right? <laughs> but if we are going to see the abundance come to us, we have to think in a whole different way. You told the story years ago of having to believe God for a million dollars. And when that million dollars came in, and all of a sudden you had a revelation of what it cost to believe God and to dream and stand for a million dollars. How many people have ever even gone through that when all they're doing is making their house payment and their car payment, which is what I've done in my life. Yeah. But the Lord has challenged me because we're going to see economic shifts. And if we're not there with our pot saying, God, I'm ready for this. If we're not ready for that, that thing's not going to happen. I'll give you a for instance. I had a dream one night. In my dream, a guy walks into the church office, the church, the front foyer. <laughs> And he says, hi, I'm here. And my secretary calls me down, says, there's a gentleman who wants to see you. Dress nice, you know, not, not too, f but just dress nice business. And he says, uh, you know, um, I represent such and such a, a company that I own. And uh, we've been sort of watching your church. Well, recently I, I came to be a believer in Jesus Christ. And I feel like we're supposed to help support your vision. Hmm. Um, what do you need? And this is what I did in the dream. I went. Well, you know what? Man, we need a couple of new computers because the computers we've got are shot. And I said, we don't have any of those little chairs. You know those little chairs for the children's chew that we all grew up in in church? I said, we don't have any of those. And um, I said, so we need some of that. And, and, and the Lord, and then I said in the dream, I said, that's what we need. And the guy went like this. He went, hmm. <laughs> he was disappointed. Exactly. He got out his checkbook. And he wrote me the check. And he said, thanks. And he handed me this check for what, what, what would have been two or $3,000. And the dream ended like that. And I woke up immediately. It's amazing. What he wanted from me was, what's your vision for your next building? Yeah. yeah. What's your vision for this church? Wow. How are you? And I caught that. It was 15 years ago. I'm telling you, if that guy shows up now, we're going to go sit in my office. You have and I'm going to go, well, now that you've mentioned it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got a plan. Because we've got to think bigger. We've we got to change the way we, we think, think so that God can bless that. And we have to think, and we also have to believe that God can bless it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, I wow. want you at home to catch this because sometimes we get, we, well, you know the old statement, we can't see the forest for the trees. Yeah. We see all of our problems, we see all our limitations, and we mm. can't see bigger than that. But God is a God of the bigger dream, the bigger vision. Mm -hmm. And you know what, if you can dream a dream that has the hand of God at the center of it, that dream can become possible. And he's uh, also the God of the impossible. When he well, told Isaac that. to sow wow. in the year of a famine, and Isaac sowed and in response to God, in obedience to God, and he reaped a hundredfold. That's what God wants to do today. Amen. Let's pray for you, Lord. We just pray your yes. hand upon you, Lord. your people. We do believe, Lord, that there's wealth. It's for a purpose. Mm -hmm. It's for your kingdom. It's for, it's for, your, for your, kingdom, your glory. Lord. It's for your purposes on the yes, earth. Lord. And we commit it to you. Bless those watching yes, today Father with God. your blessings, we pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus Amen. Name. Call the prayer center, won't you? And they will agree with you and stand with you. Thank you, Craig, being thank on you. the program. Well, and thank you. <laughs> Remember this, God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This program is supported by viewers like you, and we thank you for your partnership. We want to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests, praise reports, and comments on the program. Be sure to visit our website for up-to-date information or get in touch with us by email or phone. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.